Abstract postural control deficits are the most disabling aspects of Parkinson's disease PD, resulting in decreased mobility and functional independence. The aim of this study was to assess the postural control stability revealed by variables based on the center of pressure COP, in individuals with PD while performing a sit-to-stand-to-sit -to -sit sequence under single and dual task conditions. An observational, analytical and cross-sectional study was performed. The sample consisted of nine individuals with PD and nine healthy controls. A force platform was used to measure the COP displacement and velocity. During the sit-to-stand-to-sit -to -sit sequence, the results were statistically analyzed. Individuals with PD required greater durations for the sit-to-stand-to-sit -sit sequence than the controls, P less than 0.05. The anteroposterior and mediolateral COP displacement were higher in the individuals with PD, P less than 0.05. However, only the anteroposterior COP velocity in the stand-to-sit phase P equals 0.006 was lower in the same individuals. Comparing the single and dual task conditions in both groups, the duration, the anteroposterior COP displacement and velocity were higher in the dual task condition P less than 0.05. The individuals with PD presented reduced postural control stability during the sit-to-stand-to-sit -sit sequence, especially when under the dual task condition. These individuals have deficits not only in motor performance, but also in cognitive performance when performing the sit-to-stand-to-sit -sit sequence in their daily life tasks. Moreover, both deficits tend to be intensified when two tasks are performed simultaneously. 1. Introduction Parkinson's disease PD, is considered the second most common neurodegenerative disorder, affecting about 1% of the world's current population 1, 2. Some projections indicate a large increase of this prevalence over the coming decades. At the moment, the etiology is explained by genetic predisposition and the presence of toxic environmental factors. The majority of individuals with PD present an inadequate interaction between systems responsible for body balance, including the vestibular, visual and proprioceptive systems. Consequently, these individuals tend to shift their center of gravity forward, and therefore, have difficulty to perform compensatory movements to require balance. The transition from sitting to standing and standing to sitting are components of some everyday functional tasks that are highly demanding from a postural control perspective. In fact, the sit to stand to sit STSTS sequence implies the involvement of anticipatory postural adjustments APAs to movement performance. Hence, the study concerning the STSTS sequence can contribute to clarify postural control requirements during daily activities. The variability and efficiency of functional movements require an appropriate postural control that depends on APAs to maintain stability of internal and external disturbances, taking into account the context and the task. The planning of APAs involves various structures of the central nervous system CNS, such as the pre-motor cortex, supplementary motor area, basal ganglia and cerebellum that through independent channels, convey information to the reticular formation, such as the pedunculopontine nucleus, which is important to modulate the APAs. The neural connection between the basal ganglia and the pedunculopontine nucleus is through the corticostriatal pallidum pedunculopontine circuit, which is compromised in individuals with PD leading to postural control deficits. This is manifested in the changes in the activation of postural muscles in the form of APAs. As the CNS is responsible for the motor modulation circuits, which are compromised in individuals with PD, there is a decrease in postural control and consequently, repercussions in the performance of tasks, like STSTS sequences. This decreased postural control was demonstrated through COP displacement variables. The COP displacement reflects the orientation of body segments and corrective responses that control the center of mass over the base of support, resulting from the combination of descending motor commands and the mechanical properties of the surrounding muscles. In situations of dual task, the use of cortical resources to perform motor tasks can affect or influence the performance of one or both tasks.
Despite the importance of the postural control stability for the STSTS sequence performance and the impact of PD on the postural control system, few studies have assessed these issues and only the sit-to-stand sequence has been addressed. Additionally, no study has evaluated this task under high cognitive demanding conditions. Based on these facts, the objective of the present study was to analyze the postural control stability in individuals with PD in single and dual task conditions. More specifically, the postural stability was assessed through representative COP displacement variables in the anteroposterior and mediolateral directions displacements and velocities in the five phases of the STSTS sequence in single and dual task conditions. Based on the results obtained by Bot et al. 16, and on the neural dysfunction involving postural control pathways, a reduced postural control stability in individuals with PD can be hypothesized during the preforming of the STSTS sequence. This reduced stability would be amplified in these individuals when the STSTS sequence is performed in the dual task condition. 2. Materials and Methods 2.1 Study Design and Participants A cross-sectional study was implemented using a non-probabilistic sample of nine individuals with PD and nine healthy controls, aged between 52 and 80 years old. The individuals diagnosed with PD were patients from the Parkinson's Association, Porto. In Portugal, while the healthy controls were community-dwelling volunteers, mainly from Porto. Subjects were excluded if they presented one of the following criteria, severe cognitive impairment, screened using the Montreal Cognitive Assessment, MOCA test, incapable of performing the sit-to-stand or stand-to-sit sequence independently, and unable to speak. Severely disabled PD patients greater than 3 HONE and YAR scale, patients diagnosed with any other neuromuscular disease, and those who had undergone deep brain stimulation through subthalamic surgery or were taking cholinergic medication were also excluded. Healthy controls that had been diagnosed as adults with any neuromuscular disorder or that could not be considered sedentary according to the Center for Disease Control for the American College of Sports Medicine were also excluded. A trained researcher conducted the data collection based on a structured protocol. The study was approved by the Ethical Review Board of Escola Superior de Tecnologia da Saad, Instituto Politecnico do Porto, in Portugal. Written informed consent, according to the Helsinki Declaration, was obtained from all participants. 2.2. Instruments. The data collected from all participants included the sociodemographic characteristics age, gender, height, weight and level of a do cation, and years of disease, cognitive performance, assessed using the MOCA test, HONE and YAR scale and the COP data acquired us in a force platform, model FP4060-8 from Vertec Corporation, USA, under the single and dual task conditions. The scale of Hone and Yar 1967, evaluates the severity of overall dysfunction in individuals with PD. It is a seven-point scale, in which each point represents a different stage of the disease stages 1 to 5, including 1.5 and 2.5. The scale increases with the severity of dysfunction, along with the stage of the disease 26. The MOCA test consists of eight fields, visual spatial, nomination, memory, attention, language, abstraction, deferred evocation and orientation. The performance of an individual is calculated by the addition of the scores obtained in each of the domains, and the maximum that can be reached is equal to 30 points 25, 28. For the evaluation of the postural control, the data from the force platform was acquired at a sampling rate of 1000 Hz 29. The platform was connected to a Vertec AM6300 amplifier, USA, and in turn. This was connected to an analog digital converter from Biopac SY's Thames, Inc., USA, and to an analog board of Qualysis Track Manager, Sweden, that can be used for stabilometric analyses. The stabilometric measurements comprise the assessment of balance in the orthostatic position through body movements, taking into account the anteroposterior FX, mediolateral FY, and vertical FZ components of the ground reaction force. For this, it is necessary to monitor the 
movement of the COP in the anteroposterior copap and mediolate arrow COPML, directions 30. The signal related to the COP movement was filtered using a fourth-order Butterworth low-pass filter with a cutoff frequency of 20 Hz 31. The attention level and consequently, the motor control perturbations were attained through a cognitive secondary task, namely the Stroop color word test. This test consists in the enunciation of the visual color instead of the written one. The number of errors in the number of named items were used for analysis 32 during a predefined time 60s for both groups 2.3 procedures after an explanation of all the procedures involved all individuals performed the study with shorts and standard shoes 33 the height of the chair seat was adjusted to 100 percent of the lower leg length from the knee joint to the ground and two-thirds of the femur supported on the seat was used as a reference for the subjects to be considered in the sitting position in the single task condition the subjects were asked to rise from sitting with a self-selected speed without using their up per limbs 34 then remain for 60s in the standing position looking at a point two meters away at eye level after this interval, subjects were instructed to sit, again without any kind of support and at a self-selected speed. In the dual task condition, all the previous procedures were repeated, however, the subjects were required to perform the Stroop test during the performing of the STSTS sequence. 28. The test words in different colors were projected on a wall at eye level. The subjects were instructed to name the color instead of reading the word and no other specific instructions were given. The words were present according to each participant's responses during a predefined period of 60s. A one-minute rest between each trial was allowed, and the necessary repetitions were performed in order to obtain three valid trials for each subject. The COP displacement variables were analyzed over the five phases of the STSTS sequence. For this, the sit to stand to sit. 1072A. Fernandez et al., Medical Engineering and Physics 3720151070-1075 Table 1 Procedures adopted to assess the phases of the sit to stand to sit sequence, based on Sukahara et al., 18. Start in phase 1 The instant when the COP signal derived from the baseline, obtained in the sitting position, was greater than 3 standard deviations for a minimum interval of 50 ms. The instant associated to the first local maximum of the COP signal from the sit to stand sequence. Phase 2 The instant associated to the first local maximum of the COP signal from the sit to stand sequence. The instant of the first local minimum of the COP signal during the sit to stand sequence. Phase 3 The instant of the first local minimum of the COP signal during the sit to stand sequence. The instant when the COP signal values were lower than the baseline, obtained in the standing position, plus 3 standard deviations for a minimum interval of 50 ms. Phase 4 The instant when the COP signal derived from the baseline, obtained from the standing position, was greater than 3 standard deviations for a minimum interval of 50 ms. The instant associated to the first local maximum of the COP signal from the standing to sit sequence. Phase 5 The instant associated to the first local maximum of the COP signal from the standing to sit sequence. The instant when the COP signal values were higher than the baseline, obtained in the sighting, plus 3 standard deviations for a minimum interval of 50 ms. Table 2 Comparison of the sociodemographic and anthropometric variables between the two groups under study. Individuals with PD N equals 9 healthy controls N equals 9 P value M plus or minus SDM plus or minus SD. Age years 66.00 plus or minus 8.22 63.89 plus or minus 8.090 0.340 gender male n percent 6 0.319 education years 7.67 plus or minus 5.07 7.78 plus or minus 4.58 0.796 weight kilogram 69.33 
0.3 plus or minus 12.5974.00 plus or minus 9.860.796 height m 1.65 plus or minus 0.08 1.64 plus or minus 0.08 0.931 mocha 24.44 plus or minus 2.24 26.33 plus or minus 1.00 0.063 Hone and Yar Scale Stage 1, N percent 333.3 Stage 1.5, N percent 333.3 Stage 2, N percent 111.1 Stage 2.5, N percent 222.2 Years of PD 10.22 Plus or Minus 5.38 Stroop Test No of Naming Colors 30.89 Plus or Minus 11.19 35.611 Plus or Minus 17.0 0.499 Hone and Yar Scale, Stage 1 Unilateral Disease, Stage 1.5 Unilateral and Axial Disease, Stage 2 Bilateral Disease without Impairment of Balance, Stage 2.5 Mild Bilateral Disease, Stage 3 Mild to Moderate Bilateral Disease. Independent Samples T-Test and Chi-Square Test sequence was divided into five phases sitting phase phase one sit to stand phase phase two standing phase phase three stand to sit phase phase four and sitting phase phase five the procedures used to identify the phases are shown in table one the data acquisition was always performed by the same investigator to ensure the reproducibility of the procedures the data analysis was performed using the MATLAB software, MathWorks, USA, and Acknowledge software, Biopack Systems, Inc. USA. 2.4. Statistical analysis Descriptive statistical analyses were performed using proportions and measures of central tendency and dispersion. The independent sample t-test and chi-square test were performed to examine whether there were significant differences between the groups in terms of the socio-demographic and anthropometric variables. The multiple analysis of variance MANOVA, test was used to analyze the interaction between the groups PD and controls and the conditions single and dual task. The Bonferroni analysis was used as a post hoc test to determine the differences in single and dual task conditions in each group and to determine for each condition the differences between the groups PD and controls. The number of errors and the number of correctly named items for the Stroop test were used as covariates in the analysis. Two tailed tests were used in all analyses, and P less than 0.05 was adopted for statistical significance. All statistical analyses were conducted using IBM SPSS Statistics 22.0, SPSS, Inc., Chicago, Illinois, USA. 3. Results The 9 PD individuals 66.7% male had a mean age of 66 years old, standard deviation SD equals 8.2, a mean education of 7.7 .7 years SD equals 5.6, and a mean number of years with PD 10.22 SD equals 5.38. Most of these participants were classified in stage 1 and 1.5 of the Hone and Yar scale. The nine healthy controls, 44.4% male, had a mean age of 63.9 years, SD equals 8.1, and a mean education of 7.8 years, SD equals 4.6. The Mann-Whitney test and chi-square test showed no significant differences between the two groups studied, Table 2. The MANOVA test showed that in Phase 1, no significant differences were found between the groups between subjects or conditions within subjects and also no significant interaction was found between group and condition, Table 3. In Phase 2, a significant difference between the groups was found. The individuals with PD presented a greater duration, P equals 0.047, compared to the healthy controls. The post hoc analysis showed that these differences occurred only in the dual task condition. P equals 0.005. However, no differences between conditions or any significant interaction between groups and conditions were found. In phase 3, the differences between groups were found in terms of the duration and COPAP displacement. The duration was significantly greater in the PD individuals than in the healthy controls, P less than 0.001. 
These differences occurred both under single P less than 0.001 and dual task P equals 0.004 conditions. The COPAP displacement was significantly higher in the individuals with PD in comparison to the healthy. Controls 0.015 the post hoc analysis showed that these differences occurred under the dual task condition P equals 0.021. No differences. A. Fernandez et al., Medical Engineering and Physics 37. Fig. 1. Estimated marginal means and standard error of the phase durations and COP based parameters under the single and dual task conditions for both groups. Table 3 results of the MANOVA test with p-values of between subjects, within subjects and interaction for the duration of each phase and COP-based parameters. Covariates adjusted, p-values. Phase duration COPAP COPML VLAP VELML 1 group, between subject, 0 0.267 0 0.276 0 0.725 0 0.662 0 0.909 group, within subjects, 0 0.348 0 0.640 0 0.817 0 0.765 0 0.943 interaction 0 0.712 0 0.210 0 0.145 0 0.513 0 0.9592 group between subject less than 0 0.05 0 0.088 0 0.606 0 0.238 0 0.496 group within subjects 0 0.149 0 0.623 0 0.787 0 0.408 0 0.986 interaction 0 0.092 0 0.12 0 0.167 0 0.737 0 0.9323 group between subject less than 0 0.01 less than 0 0.05 0 0.449 0 0.062 0 0.054 group within subjects 0 0.354 0 0.271 0 0.625 0 0.885 0 0.150 interaction 0 0.6 0 0.0, 0 0.137 0 0.410 0 0.614 0 0.0894 group between subject less than 0 0.01 0 0.056 less than 0 0.05 less than 0 0.01 0 0.844 group within subjects less than 0 0.01 0 0.740 0 0.325 0 0.822 0 0.071 Interaction 0 0.333 0 0.499 0 0.069 0 0.493 0 0.1085 Group between subject 0 0.173 less than 0 0.05 0 0.734 0 0.077 0 0.590 Group within subjects 0 0.587 less than 0 0.05 0 0.074 less than 0 0 0.010 0 0.284 interaction less than 0 0.05 0 0.369 0 0.125 less than 0 0.01 0 0.795 between the tasks or any significant interaction between group and condition were found in phase 4 the differences between the two groups occurred in the duration copml displacement and copap velocity the duration was significantly greater in the individuals with PD than in the healthy controls P less than 0.001. Relative to the healthy controls, the COPML displacement was significantly higher P equals 0.036 and the COPAP velocity was significantly lower P equals 0.006 in the individuals with PD. The post hoc analysis showed that these differences occurred both under the single and dual task conditions, except in terms of the COPML displacement that occurred only in the dual task condition, P equals 0.015. Also, differences between the two conditions were found in the duration, with a longer duration in the dual than in the single task condition, P equals 0.009. The post hoc analysis showed that these differences occurred in the group with PD, P equals 0.004.
Finally, no significant interaction between group and condition were found. In Phase 5, only the COPAP displacement had differences between the two groups, with higher values for the individuals with PD in comparison to the healthy controls. However, significant differences were found between the conditions for the COPAP displacement P equals 0.043 and velocity 0.010, with higher values for the dual task condition. Also, no significant interaction between group and condition was found in terms of the duration and COPAP velocity, which seems to indicate that the differences in the duration and COPAP velocity were caused by the disease PD. The estimated marginal means of the conditions and groups is presented in FIG. 1. A. Fernandez et al., Medical Engineering and Physics 4. Discussion This study reveals significant differences regarding the postural control of individuals with PD. It is clear that there is a relationship between performing the STSTS sequence and performing a cognitive task. Comparing the individuals with PD and the healthy controls studied as to the duration of each phase of the sit to stand to sit sequence, significant differences were found in the single and dual task conditions in phases 2 to 4. This finding corroborates previous studies that show a significant increase in the duration of the phases of the STSTS sequence performed by individuals with PD-16. No difference in the duration of phase 1 was found in the study of Ingster, where the time to rise from a chair was not significantly different between individuals with PD on medication and controls. The differences found in the duration of phases 2 to 4 between the two groups in both the single and dual task conditions can be explained by the pathophysiology of PD. In phase 2, the individuals have to perform a sit to stand transfer and the greater duration of this transition in PD individuals compared to healthy controls could be due to the bradykinesia and rigidity present in individuals with PD. Phase 3 corresponds to a stabilization phase that rarely presents any postural deficits in PD. In phase 4, individuals have to control the postural muscles, including the soleus eccentric activity, which is a complex task for individuals with PD. Comparing the COPAP and COPML displacements between the individuals with PD and the healthy controls, significant differences were only found in the dual task condition, with the former group showing higher COPAP displacements and a weaker relation for the COPML displacement. Individuals with PD have superior backward stability resulting from a more anterior cop position at seat off. Given these differences in movement patterns, individuals with mild to moderate severity of PD have an exaggerated anticipatory response in the preparation phase in comparison to individuals without PD. This anticipatory response is manifested as an increased momentum that generates a greater forward cop displacement 35. Furthermore, several studies have shown an altered function of the supplementary motor area in individuals with PD due to its indirect connections with the basal ganglia 36. Compared to the healthy controls, the individuals with PD had a lower COPAP velocity in the single task condition in phases 3 and 4, and also a lower COPML velocity in phase 3. During the STSTS sequences, these individuals demonstrated a large proportion of co-contraction because they move slower 37. However, individuals with PD compensate their slowness and related posterior instability by positioning their cop forward at seat off 38. The lower velocity could increase the likelihood of backward balance loss at seat off because of its proximity to their limits of stability 39. Comparing the single and dual task conditions, only significant differences were found in the COPML velocity in phase 3. The few differences between the single and dual task conditions in individuals with PD may be due to the time of diagnosis of the PD of the individuals studied 10.22 plus or minus 5.38 years, as they may have already acquired, over time, several strategies that assist in carrying out daily life tasks, such as the movements required during the STSTS sequence. 
These strategies can also justify the similarity with some findings obtained for healthy controls, 40, as well as the fact that the PD group only had a mild severity of the disease, median Hone and Yar score of 1.5. However, a limitation of this study is that the groups did not perform the cognitive task, Stroop test, in the single task condition. The priority of a task is closely related to several factors such as the progression stage of the disease, complexity of the secondary task, limitation of attentional resources, motivational preference, internal versus external attention, and postural confidence 22, 41, 42. So the assessment using the Stroop test in the single task condition could be helpful to determine the differences between the two groups at baseline. However, there are studies aimed to identify a number of factors in order to predict the Stroop performance. For example, one study found an inverse relationship between cognitive deficits and an increase of errors and therefore reduced the number of colors specified in the Stroop test 43. Other studies have found that the level of education is also a predictor for the Stroop performance 44. However, in this study, the cognitive impairment and educational level were taken into account. Individuals with cognitive impairment were not included in this study and there were no differences between the PD group and the healthy controls in terms of the performance of the MOCA test and of the educational level. Thus, although the Stroop test was not performed at baseline, it seems that the differences found in the dual task condition are due to the introduction of the motor task. Nevertheless, this should be confirmed in future studies. In this study, we found that the individuals with PD had greater difficulty in the stand-to-sit sequence, which has been ignored in current studies, than in the sit-to-stand sequence, especially in the dual-task condition. Biomechanical studies focusing on posture stability have shown that the performance of dual task has a significant effect on the postural control in these individuals 45 to 48. This suggests that they create a restriction on APAs in order to focus on the cognitive task without losing the balance 22, 49, 50. Furthermore, recent studies with rehabilitative intervention in individuals with PD have shown promising results. The reported results indicate a potential for reversing or slowing the progression of the disease, demonstrating that the ability to learn is relatively well preserved 51. Several stud IEs have shown that the dual task cognitive motor training has a positive effect on gait in the PD population, in particular, in terms of the gait speed, variability and step length 52, 53. 5. Conclusion The individuals with PD presented reduced postural stability for most of the phases of the STSTS sequence, and this stability was most impaired in the dual task condition. These findings may suggest that this postural control deficit could lead to compensatory motor strategies in the lower extremities. However, further studies concerning the impact of reduced stability during the STSTS sequence in individuals with PD and their compensatory motor strategies are required. This study also provides data and guidelines for future research, as well as pointing out the importance of cognitive training. Based on our findings that are in line with the ones reported by other authors 54 to 56, it is expected that the stimulation of the cognition can help achieve improvements in terms of motor task performance. Conflict of interest statement The authors report no conflict of interest. Competing interests none declared. Funding none. Ethical approval This study was approved by the Ethical Review Board of Escola Superior de Tecnologia da Sad, Instituto Politecnico do Porto, in Portugal. A. Fernandez et al., Medical Engineering and Physics 37 2015 1070 1075 1075. Acknowledgements This research was carried out with the support and contribution of the first author's Ph.D. grant from Instituto Politecnico do Porto and Escola Superior de Tecnologia da Sad, in Portugal.